Hello everybody. Good day and welcome to the discussion on CAT 24's first slot, the morning slot, which happened today. So let's jump into the discussion. For those of you who have taken the exam, uh, this is this video will help you understand what the cutoffs are going to be across the sections and also overall and also kind of will tell you what are the questions that you should have attempted, what you may have kind of missed. All this is based on the feedback that we have got from students who have written the exam. And for those of you who are preparing for uh, CAT 25 and for the CATs, this is going to help you understand how the CAT paper is CAT 24 was and also therefore how is it that you should be training yourself to crack these CATs in the coming years. So let's start off without any further ado. So the agenda for today is to quickly give you an overview of the exam and then we'll do a deep dive into the sections individually the, in the order that they come in the exam, BRC first, DLR later, and then quant. Oh, and then we'll also look at the overall analysis and then we'll uh, try and paint a picture for you overall on how the first lot of CAT24 was, all right? So let's start off with the overall pattern of the exam. Now, there's, as you, most of you know already, so the number of questions overall in the exam has gone up to 22, to 68 overall, majorly because of the increment in the number of questions in the DLR section. Now, as you can see, in the DLR section, there are 22 questions that we, that is being shown here. Last year, this 22 was only 20, right? So last year, the number of questions was, total number of questions was 66. This year, the questions went up to 68. In the other two sections, there's no change. 16 RC questions, eight VA questions, same as last year. In fact, same as the last three cats. And in quant, also 22 questions, same as the last three cats. So for the last four cats, including cat 24, VRC and quant, no change in number of questions. DLR went up by two questions, right? We'll, there's a further discussion that is required in terms of how the questions were in DLR, which we'll take up when we look at the DLR section. Now let's look at how the exam went overall across centers. Overall, pretty smooth conduct is what is uh, reported. Yes, there were some issues that some students faced in some centers where their systems kind of uh, uh, went bonkers during the test, but thankfully people, the invigilators there responded quickly and allocated different systems to them. So overall that issue, as far as the reports and feedback that we got from the students has overall been taken care of well by the authorities as we hear so far. Now, and there's one surprise in the exam pattern, we already discussed that. Other than this one surprise that we just discussed in the last slide, there has been no surprise as far as the content of the exam goes in terms of the question types. No new question types have been seen this year. A couple of years ago, there's a sentence placement question type which was added in the verbal ability section, verbal ability area of the VARC section. So no such surprises as far as the question types goes. No such surprises, no surprises rather as far as the coverage of the topics, no surprise areas where questions came from or no skew towards any particular uh, topic or concept. So that way, a uh, very balanced or no surprise paper overall, but for the one little surprise as far as the number of questions go. All right. Now then, let's start off by looking at the VARC. The number of questions uh, our overall in RC are 16, four passages four questions in each passage, 4, 4, 16. No multiple uh, non-MCQ questions, no TTAP questions, type in the answer questions as far as the RC section goes. Now, in the verbal ability section, there has been a bit of a surprise or a bit of a change, so to say. The para formation questions which were there, which were regularly seen, were kind of not there. So while the total of number of VRC questions remained at eight, the distribution slightly changed. The odd one out, there were two odd one out questions, three para summary questions and three sentence placement questions. The para formation questions were kind of visibly missing, so to say, right? So then the, in terms of the theta questions, only the odd one out was theta. Now, this is a regular mistake that many people do, mistaking the odd one out for para formation questions. This happened for many people this year as well. So those who didn't, and identify these are odd one out questions. Overall, uh, the questions were kind of handleable, so to say. We'll get into that in terms of uh, difficulty level. 
and coverage. Now, looking at the distribution of the reading comprehension questions, the four passages were across fairly diverse and distinct areas. One about Australia's marsupials, another about content in movies, another about economics, and another about crafts and manufacturing. So four distinctly different areas is where the topics have been chosen from. And in terms of readability, the first passage or the first passage that is listed here, the marsupials in Australia, the bandicoots, that is a fairly easy to read passage. And the questions were also not too tough to answer. So this is the one passage the student should not have not attempted in this section, right? Whereas the other three passages did have a slight bit of a difficulty, some in terms of reading, some in terms of both reading and answering. This one, this one passage has, is the one that students should not have missed. So for those of you expecting or uh, expecting a good score, I'm sure you would have answered this, identified and answered this particular passage, right? Now coming to the remaining two, the in terms of readability, clearly the passage on economics and the passage on the on crafts and manufacturing were the two fairly difficult passages to read across the four. Whereas in terms of questions and being able to answer them, both the one on economics and crafts and manufacturing were the ones which were tough. Which were tough because not only because of the overall readability of the passage, but also because of the closeness of the options that are there, which is obviously a fair thing, which is actually something that you would come to expect in the RC questions, in fact, across all the questions in the English section, right? So that is something which is clearly standing out in these two passages, whereas the other two passages are fairly okay to answer. And the length of these passages, overall, the length was around 400 words across all the passages, 400 words roughly here and there, 400 words is the number uh, length of the passage. So fairly, uh, no surprise there as far as the lengths then comes the verbal ability questions. As uh, we said earlier, uh, not too much to discuss here. The paraformation questions or parajambles are missing. Instead, sentence placement are not gone out. Uh, I've seen a para summary here. There's a slight typo here. The para summary is three and odd one out is two. So please uh, take care of that. This is three and this is two. Yeah. Now, Overall, as far as the difficulties of this section goes, it's moderate to difficult and compared to last year, compared to last year, this section can be said to be slightly on the easier side. A couple of more questions is what one could expect to answer more than what he or she would have done if given the last year's paper, right? So overall, across the four passages, if one attempts that one passage, passage on Nasuddin marsupials and a couple of passes out of the remaining three and answers some six to eight VA questions overall, I think that one can consider to have done a very good job in this section, right? And then making sure, obviously, uh, questions with close answer choices, so ignore the repetition of the word close here. So it's too close to which to indicate that I think uh, the team has put too close there. Um, so overall, making sure that we double check, obviously there will not be too much time available in the exam. But those of you who are able to balance, strike the right balance between speed and accuracy, those of you would have could expect to get good scores in this section, right? Overall, as I said, the exam is a much easier than last year's section. So let's now look at the cutoffs. Now for the 85 percentile, the cutoff is expected to be around 20 to 22 marks. So which means around eight to nine questions, one would say. So because even if it's eight questions and one mistake, one would fall to around 20 questions, 20 marks. So instead, around so roughly around eight to nine questions is what I would put at for 85 percentile, and around 12 questions at around 29 to 31 marks for 95 percentile, and around 16 questions out of 24, so that's two thirds of the section, to get 99 percentile. Right? Let's now move on to DLR and uh, overall. We had five, the difference, the big difference, again, as we were talking about earlier, the increase in the number of questions happened in this section. The increase happened in a way which could actually benefit the students because instead of four sections earlier, the students now have a choice between five, sec, five, sec, five sets. Instead of four sets, there are now five sets in this section. There were four sets of five questions each. So four, five, 20 in the last three cats. Now we have sets of five questions each as you can see in the fourth column here in the number of questions column 
there are two sets of five questions each and three sets of four questions so that kind of increase the choice in terms of question availability for students so because they could quickly look at picking the five question set because they could get more bang for the buck if they spend more time on if they spend time and get more questions right on these sets however as you can see in terms of difficulty level both the five question sets were difficult so that was kind of in a way one can one could call it a trap you give more questions and attract people and make them spend their time there waste their time there and not actually try and attend the easier sets so that is a balance that students uh, should strike here so those of you as you can see out of all the sets this one is being written as moderate now this is a slightly new type of data representation which is called a box and whisker chart or a candlestick chart however this chart is not difficult to read while the data representation may be new the box is uh, the data given is pretty easy to read and thankfully as students gave us feedback on this set this set is fairly easy to answer an attempt because it's direct formulas given by this, by the data itself and the data to be taken from the form uh, from the chart and placed in the formula and we get the answer right so apparently it's a fairly easy to do but with the we are still not rating it as easy we are rating it as moderate because one this could, uh, could be a daunting set for many to get into and because of the huge number of data points that one should work with and ensure that they, they make no mistake so because of which we are kind of categorizing this as moderate then there are the two five question sets both of them are difficult we are rating them as difficult uh doable sets overall the tournament set if one applies their mind it is not too difficult to get but given the way in which the data has been presented that could kind of make it difficult overall and there is a star rating and bloggers question which is again doable it is quant based reasoning it's an lr based set quant based reasoning is what we call it normally it's a numbers in a table is what you would work with and that is another doable set and then the two overall difficult sets in this section could potentially be the countries visited and the set on elections now overall as i said this while this is overall difficult and there is one easy must do set which is set on stocks the first set that we discussed and there is one based lr the net difficulty level is a notch easier than last year's dlr which means students should have attempted more and the cutoffs could increase compared to last year so let's quickly look at them for 85 percentile we are saying that students should attempt a couple of more questions compared to last year right last year it was around 11 to 12 now we are saying it's around 16 to 18 right so about 5 to 6 marks more than last year is what they could potentially need to get to 85 percentile and to get to 99 percentile around 11 or 12 to 13 questions broadly is what could take them to so three sets attempting three sets could take them to 99 percentile right now uh quant essentially not too much to discuss here in quant with two questions no changes broad distribution in terms of uh, the topics from which questions have come the regular suspects are there the the big change compared to last year that we have seen this year is that there are questions more number of questions from arithmetic you see ertv ppl there and we have sci ama time and distance time and work right so all these in terms of arithmetic you can see you can count 5 plus 2 plus 5 plus 3 plus 2 10 questions so almost half of the exam is from arithmetic so that is kind of uh, the factor which is overall making this section a uh, fairly easy one to do compared to last year so the areas like functions which was missing last year did make an appearance permutations and combination there was one question there from that also while there are many areas which did not appear this year like graphs venn diagrams or number systems etc not too much of uh, an issue that would uh, many people would actually be happy because they may have kind of put these topics aside given their relative importance however those of you who focused on making sure that they cover all areas would have benefited because as you can see from this table the distribution is far and wide focusing on some two three areas or only arithmetic would get you somewhere but would get only to uh, not till the end you will not be able to go all the way it will only take you to partly so to be able to make sure that you get the best possible score you look at the coverage that is required so those of you who have made sure that you spent time on all these areas would have obviously higher chances of success so therefore net net given that there is a lot more arithmetic this year compared to last year you're saying that 
based on the feedback again that we can get from students, the cutoff could be much uh, lower because of the lower difficulty level, meaning the cutoff could be much higher because of the lower difficulty level. So for 85 percentile, we are saying that it's around 15 to 17 marks, which would be around six to seven questions, more, more of seven than six, because if you answer six questions and make a mistake, you're, you lose uh, 18 minus four, you get only 14, right? So instead, attempting seven questions and hoping, let's say even if you make one mistake, 721 minus 4, 17 is what you would end up with. So roughly, seven questions for 85 percentile, 11 for 99 percentile, and around 14 questions. So one third of the paper for to get uh, to nine, uh, two thirds of the paper, sorry, to get to 99 percentile broadly, with obviously good accuracy as one would obviously estimate. So overall, Across all the sections, therefore, we see a perceived, we perceive a clear drop in difficulty level compared to last year, quant, DILR, and to some extent English as well. Uh, a very small extent in English, but clearly in quant and DILR, and therefore significantly more attempts are possible this year. So those who have kept an open mind, really not let any thoughts of last, how was last year's paper, how is this year's paper going to be, how many questions should I attempt, putting all those thoughts out and focusing on answering the easiest possible questions in the paper, making sure that no easy questions are missed. That is the key to a better performance in this section. So I hope this uh, analysis helped you. So all the best if you're targeting CAT 24 or and make sure that you put in the necessary preparation based on this inputs if you're targeting CAT 25 or beyond. Thank you, all the best.